BBC Television has an afternoon of sport ahead. On two, further coverage of the second test, combined with tennis from Wimbledon. And here on one, we have nearly two and a half hours devoted entirely to the opening day of Wimbledon 80. Welcome to Wimbledon 1980, the 94th Wimbledon Championships, which were founded in 1877. And first, news of the weather. Well, it's not looking too bad at the moment, but we have had rain here, and in fact the covers didn't come off the court until about 1.35. And just before we went on the air, we heard that it's unlikely that play will start here before 2.15. Clearly, they want the courts to uh, breathe a bit after the covers have come off. So no play we expect until about 2.15. Let's keep our fingers crossed and hope that we get some then. Uh, the forecast is not good. We are promised sunny intervals but we're also threatened with prolonged showers this afternoon and that uh, tells its own story. I think we can expect some inter interruptions on this first day of Wimbledon 80. Well, of course, Wimbledon is the most traditional and historic tennis tournament in the world, but it's never been a tournament which uh, has minded looking ahead and making progress. And I think the story here uh, on this opening day of this new Wimbledon is not only one of history, but also one of development. First of all, of course, uh, we could have history made here this week, uh, uh, this fortnight. Bjorn Borg, last year's champion, already won it four times in a row, could make it five, and his favourite to do so this year, and at the same time could come up with the longest uh, succession of wins in matches at Wimbledon ever. And then, of course, in the ladies' championship, Tracy Austin, if she wins, will become the youngest ever ladies' champion this century. She would be just 17 and a half years old if she did it. Well, now, the centre court... Um, has always had the main body of outside courts just behind it. You're looking at them now, a whole complex of outside courts there. But uh, talking of developments at Wimbledon, we have four new courts on the opposite side of the centre court, that is the north side, and here they are, numbered 14 to 17. Big stand up one end, as you can see, to see play on number 14 court. And we have a brand new camera perched up on the roof of the centre court, which is the one you're looking from now to see play on these new outside courts, which now makes 18 courts available for play here instead of 15 as last year. Well, of course, the centre of attraction always is both the centre court and number one court. And on those two show courts, we have yet another development this year. And there it is, the new electronic eye being used for the first time ever at Wimbledon. They're never loath to try new developments, and this is a very interesting one. Uh, that box, uh, there are four of them in each court, is opposite the service line, and it will help both linesmen and umpires judge whether serves are in or out. And there's both a visual and audible signal going both to the linesman and to the umpire. Well, as you can see, uh, always a hopeful sign is the moment when the net is raised, and that's what's happening at this moment on the centre court. Now, that electronic eye, uh, the first man who, uh, whose service will be tested by the new system is, of course, the defending champion, Bjorn Borg, because traditionally, the reigning champion always serves the first ball of the first match on the centre court. And today, Borg will do it against Ismail El Shafe of Egypt, who, uh, strangely enough, is one of only three men who've ever beaten Borg at Wimbledon. He did it back in 1974, but, uh, of course, not really fancied to do it today. El Shafe, a left-hander, is 32 years old now and faces the number one seed and defending champion. And then the second match on centre court, well, this is a fascinating pairing. John Fever of Great Britain, ranked number five in this country, playing Ilya Nastasi, who's twice been runner-up here at Wimbledon. And this match, of course, is a repeat of their deciding rubber in the Davis Cup only a week or so ago at Bristol. A most acrimonious match then, which went to a final set which Fever only just lost 4-6. So we expect uh, great things from that match. And then finally on the centre court today, Vijay Amritraj of India, who took Borg to five sets in the second round here last year, plays the number 16 seed, Jose Luis Clerc of Argentina, ranked number two in Argentina, behind Vilas, who lost to Tanner. Clerc lost to Tanner in the last 16 here last year. An order of play on number one court, and that's led there by a match between Butch Waltz of the United States, a giant Californian, six foot four, 
playing the number two seed and uh, many people's fancy for the men's singles title, John McEnroe, the left-hander, still only 21 years old. Second match there, Vitas Gerolaitis of the United States, seeded four, uh, twice a semi-finalist here at Wimbledon, playing today the pretty well unknown Swede, 20-year-old Stefan Siemensen. And then finally, a very interesting British pairing, perhaps unfortunate that they should come together at this stage, John Lloyd of Great Britain, ranked number three in Great Britain, playing Buster Mottram, Britain's number one. Well, now officials coming out onto the centre court and the players. And leading the way, the man who's won this title on the right, four times already in a row, Bjorn Borg of Sweden, seeded, of course, number one, playing the 32-year-old Ismail El Shafe of Egypt. And your commentators on the centre court, John Barrett and Dan Maskell. Well, how wonderful. In spite of the, uh, the rain and all the difficulties, precisely at 2 o'clock the championship starts and out come the two men that we've been waiting for to open the 94th Wimbledon. And I'm happy to tell you that right above my head there's quite a pleasant sky and it looks as though at least we may well get underway. We'll try to identify them for you. Borg there on the left of your picture. And the umpire, Jeremy Shales, is just asking them to uh, toss and choose. Here's your great Borg. Will he win it the fifth time? Be a record that was last done 1902 to 1906 by the great Hugh Elder Hurty. You'll soon find out which of these two players will be serving because a little red light will go up in the scoreboard against the name. So here he comes. Twenty-four years of age, Borg, born in the suburb of Stockholm, now lives in Monte Carlo, and he really must be under a tremendous amount of pressure trying to win this championship for the fifth time. And of course he's been very restricted, like many players, in terms of getting practice, He's here on Friday and he's only had about 15 hours of grass court play. And yesterday he was confined to an hour and a half on an indoor court. The ball boys just appearing. All the ball boys from the local schools. Now these two players have, have met before. And in fact, uh, one match all. Borg beat El Chaffee 6-2, 6-4 in the second round of the 76 uh, Pro Indoor at Philadelphia, while Borg was actually beaten here by El Chaffee when Borg was 18. So there is El Shafi, and the interesting thing is that um, Borg doesn't like playing left-handers, and El Shafi, a little heavier than uh, he used to be, he's not a really serious tournament competitor these days. I was playing at Wimbledon, like most players do. So the mere fact that he's a left-hander will um, not be to the liking of the Borg. This stage, I think it's interesting to see how the court is playing. I had the usual, I had the usual warm-up on it for ladies on Saturday to just bruise the grass, take a little of the sap out of the grass, and of course it's been under covers for at least five days. It all seems to be coming through really rather well. And it may well be it may well be that they'll slide about a bit at first because they only got the covers off just before we started and the court sweats a bit. But it really was a fine effort to get out here just on two o'clock. Well, John Barrett is with me as usual. 
of course, inevitably watching. Borg's coach and mentor in the centre of your picture there, Leonard Bergelin, himself a great player. Beautifully rhythmical shot maker he was. And on the left of your picture, Mariana Simeonescu, John Borg's fiancée, and they plan to marry after this championship is over in July. And Dan, I was looking at the records earlier today, and one which I hoped we wouldn't uh, try and equal was Monday, the 22nd of June, 1903, which is one of the days when there was absolutely no play at all at Wimbledon. And earlier, it certainly looked as if we could have been in for such a disappointment, but happily, the clouds have broken a little bit. And I was speaking to uh, the groundsman, Jack Yardley, just before he started play, and he said that the court he thought would play beautifully true. It was a little softer than he would have liked it to be because it, it hasn't had the warming sun that it so badly needs. In fact, he was saying if only we'd had that lovely spell of weather that we enjoyed between Easter and Whitson, and before that had the rain we've recently had, he thought the court would be absolutely perfect. It just needs a little bit of drying sun. And he expects the bounce to be a little bit lower. There we see one, an example of what he meant, I think, than it normally would be. And it's a testing moment for Bald. One remembers a couple of years ago when Victor Amaya, the giant left-handed American, so nearly beat him. And a lead in the fourth set, a break of serve, leading two sets to one. And it was just such a day as this. It was a gloomy sort of day, a little bit heavy and overcast, and the court was very soft. But, uh, Dan, uh, it's worth remembering that uh, Bjorn has only lost three times ever at Wimbledon. He came here as a junior when he was 15 and won the junior tournament, beating uh, Buster Mottram, incidentally, in the final. 7-5 in the final set. I remember watching it, and it was played out on court three. You have two more minutes. And uh, Bjorn was actually trailing 2-5 in that match and won it 7-5. And one saw then the, Im the immense... Um, winning spirit that lives within this compact frame. He's much stronger than he looks. He has a wonderful pair of shoulders. And so very quick about the court. And then he lost to Arthur Ashe in 1975, going Seven backwards in 74. That was in the quarter arms. He lost in 74 to the man he's playing today, Ismail El Shafi. And that I remember watching too on court one. In fact, I think we were covering that match at the time. And he'd come, you remember, from Paris, where he'd just won his, the first of his five French championships. And uh, he looked to me then absolutely emotionally drained and very tired. And he had One minute to more. Give against El Sheffield. But, uh, and the other occasion was against, was it Roger Taylor, wasn't it? Yes, it was, John. 73. But, uh, of course, El Sheffield is no stranger to, to Wimbledon because he came here uh, in 1963 the runner-up in the junior invitation event, won it the next year, down in 64, and it was in the senior championship of that year, in the uh, quarterfinals, that um, he had his best ever grass court championship at Wimbledon, and that was the year when he beat Borg 6-2, 6-3, 6-1 in the third round. <laughs> well, we have, on the opening day of Wimbledon, a royal occasion, the Duchess of Kent in the royal box, her husband sitting on the right of the gentleman. Send the balls up to Mr. Picture. Borg's end of the court, please. The Duke of Kent, who is the very active president of the club. So the champion Bart starts please. with the service Borg to serve. in defense of his title. Play. Unlucky. 15 love.
30, love. Forty, love. Forty, fifteen. Interesting to see Borg going into the net behind his service. Perhaps uh, he may do that much more this year than he's done previously. Game to Borg. First game. Well, Dan, Bjorn has won the first game of the 1980 championships. I wonder if he's going to win the last. If he does, of course, he'll be making a unique place for himself in the annals of the game, something he already enjoys with his four consecutive wins. You were saying earlier that uh, it was one of the Doherty's who uh, won four <coughs> titles in a row. Yes. 1906, Laurie. And as the second Don't game is about to start, there is just the suspicion of rain falling. Hope it doesn't stop the proceedings. Love one. Oh. Well, here's the uh, little box that indicates electrically whether the ball is a fault. If the ball bounces past the service line, up to 17 inches it's recorded, and the linesman has a little earphone, and he hears the bleep. The umpire 15 all. an indication with a little machine in front of him on the uh, umpire chair. Lovely service. Thirty, fifteen. Forty, fifteen. Played. Game to El Shafi. One game all, first set. El Shafi, incidentally, was a qualifier, had to come through three very hard rounds of the qualifying competition last week at the Bank of England Sports Ground to get here. Experience brought him through. Let. First service. Love, 15. <laughs> 15 all. Thirty, fifteen. Forty, fifteen.
Uh, that was the sort of ball that uh, would the linesman would be assisted by the uh, the, the electric machine. Game to Borg. <laughs> Borg leads by two games to one. First set. And I think I can sense already this huge crowd. Absolutely full centre court. Apart from a few seats in the competitors' box. I think I can sense already that they're warming to the thought of Borg chasing another title. Um, the applause for him has always been great here since he came here and set the teeny boppers' hearts racing as a teenager himself. He had to have police escort from the outside courts. He's always behaved impeccably. No breaks at this early stage. El Shafi, 1-2. Fifteen love. Oh. Thirty love. Thirty fifteen. First double fourth of the match. Fifteen. That volley of El Shafi's was really a penetrating volley and very deep. Even Borg couldn't uh, counterattack that with any success. Game to El Shafi, two games all, first set. So a bold second service by El Shafi there and a very fine volley brings the score to two all and uh, there's only been one point scored against all four services so far. Forty, 
Game to Borg. Borg leads by three games to two. First set. Quite right, Dan. You noticed that once that Borg was serving and volleying this year, which is something we haven't seen him do before. And perhaps he uh, has decided that this is the moment to try and rehearse that area of the game, which is not natural to him. He likes instinctively to play his long rallies from the back of the court, at which he is supreme, of course. Uh, he's proved over the last four years he's supreme on grass as well as on clay, where it's considerably easier to adopt those sort of tactics. And not being a natural volleyer, he sometimes looks a bit awkward in the forecourt and doesn't instinctively move to the right place like a McEnroe does. But El Shafi has been serving and volleying very well himself so far in this match. Paul will be standing right back now to receive at 2-3 in terms of Shafi. Love, 15. Right. First service. Love 30. It's extraordinary how far Borg stands back, right back to receive the service. Shouldn't think any uh, player in the championship stands so far back. Oh, that's a marvelous angle. Love 40. Three break points for Borg. Left. First service. Game to Borg. Borg leads by four games to two. First set. So two love games for Borg. The first of them on his own service, and now this one against the surfer. So the first break. Fifteen love. Thirty, love. Thirty-two years of age, El Shafi. Doesn't play a great many serious tournaments uh, these days. Oh. Well played. Thirty fifteen. 15 El Shafi very quick there to run round his backhand to produce that forehand winner. Forty fifteen.
Game to Borg. Change the balls, please. The Borg leads by five games to two. First set. I don't think I've seen uh, the champion serve and volley as much as this since he had that famous semi-final against Garolitis, which uh, when he had to come in all the time. Yes, I think, uh, of course, it's always a help when you're when you know you're coming in, it tends to help the serve itself, and we have seen him serving very well indeed. In fact, he's covering the court beautifully. We might look at him now and see just how quick he is. Always on his toes between the shots. He gets his back racket back very early in preparation. And not, a, not an instinctive volley. In fact, on that rally, he was passed. That was the one that uh, El Shafi threaded down the line on a forehand pass. And... Uh, ball didn't move instinctively but uh, it's interesting to see that he's adopting the volleying tactic the new balls now very much lighter than the old ones changed after seven games <laughs> 15 love Love. Well played. Forty, love. Game to El Chaffe. Borg leads by five games to three. First set. So Borg serving for the first set. Five three. Second service. No, it's just out. Fifteen, love. El Shafi attempting a slice lob there. That over-sliced the ball and just faded away. a superb recovery by Borg. 30, love. Now there's an indication of the greatness of this man. El Shafi played a beautiful return of service down the line and he certainly didn't expect Borg to get to it, let alone uh, make a low pass. <laughs> 40, love. So that heavy service gives Borg three set points. Game and first set to Borg by six games to three. In 20 minutes, that set to Borg. And I would think that uh, the holder of the title would be quite happy with that form. And as the players sit there toweling off, El Shafi just talking to the uh, umpire, Jeremy Shales. In fact, uh, I think he's asking him if he thinks they ought to continue because uh, it may not be apparent on your picture, but it is raining really quite hard. And we've got a few umbrellas out now. Um, 
It has been threatening since the moment they started, in fact. I was a little surprised yes. that they did start on quite a wet surface. And the champion uh, will be pretty pleased to have that set under his belt. And we saw the example of Borg's tremendous sp speed. In the course of that last game, absolutely superb. I think they'll be... Yes, I think they are definitely leaving the court. The thing that's interested me most is the way the champion has set about the defence of his title. Been very relaxed, not a hint of tension or nerves, and. Uh, He's been attacking all the time from the net. He's been serving and volleying, and he's been returning serve from way back behind the baseline with the intention, of course, of making sure that he does get that first ball back and starts the rally. And he's finding his passing shots, as we saw in the course of that last game. At 15, love he was. A good deep serve, which he didn't follow in for once, and he picks up this superb pass, which so surprised El Shafi that he volleyed a very easy volley into the net. And I think he thought he'd hit a winner, but Borg is so quick off the mark. And the all too familiar sight of the ground staff, some of them permanent employees of the club and others taken on as temporary helpers during the championships, drawing the heavy canvas cover across. And I must say the first set interested me because uh, Borg obviously is the greatest ground stroke player in the game without any doubt. And his uh, volleying has always been slightly suspect. But as most ground, uh, ground stroke players who rely on winning from the back of the court tend to not really practice their volleying enough and the reflexes are required to be much faster for the volley. It's interesting to me that... Uh, Borg should have started this match with so much volleying behind his service. Well, that's a sad sight to see, just half an hour, or rather less, after the start of Wimbledon 80. Uh, lucky, in fact, that we had some play on centre court and number one court, because, in fact, on the outside courts, there's been no play at all yet. And those umbrellas, colourful as they are, telling a rather depressing story. So these customers have seen absolutely nothing at the moment. And the reason, of course, play has been held up in the outside courts is that they're rather less protected than the two main show courts. And so they take uh, a little longer to dry out after the covers come off. You're looking at the new number 14 court. This is a very interesting uh, new complex on the north side of the centre court, just alongside, in fact, our BBC complex. And uh, a fine new stand being built there for, play, uh, for people to see play on the new number 14. Still on the outside courts. These, of course, are the older outside courts on the opposite side of the centre court, the south side. And uh, the nets are coming down, as you can see, which means that uh, Wimbledon rather fear that uh, the rain is here to stay for a little bit. That's number two court, which is already covered completely. That, of course, is where McEnroe, the number two seed, went out last year to Tim Gullickson. So there we are, and a welcome to your first visit to our BBC studio, our television studio, which is, in fact, situated immediately underneath number one court. In fact, the stands are just above my head, but we're all beautifully soundproofed, so we shall hear nothing from up there. Now, uh, let's just have a look at the seeding list in the Men's Singles Championship. And here it is, and it's arranged in the two halves of the draw, the top and bottom halves of the draw, with, as you can see, Bjorn Borg, the defending champion, leading the top half of the draw, and uh, the number two seed at the bottom half of the draw on the other side. The two gaps there, of course, are because two seeds have withdrawn before the championships. Uh, the number 12 seed, who would have been the first seed that Borg would have met, was Yannick Noah of France. Uh, he withdrew uh, with injury, and so... At number 11 did Harold Solomon of the United States, who is not a grass court specialist, much more at home on clay courts, uh, but he's withdrawn. And so oddly enough, you see, the top two seeds now have a little bit of uh, freedom to play with before they have to face a seed. McEnroe is uh, seeded to play 
Clerk of Argentina next, and um, Borg is seeded to play Lendl as his next seeded opponent, first seeded opponent. Well, we have no play to show you from here at Wimbledon Live, that is, but there has been play going on on number one court, which you haven't seen, and so we can, by our electronic wizardry, show you what was happening on number one court before the rains came. Now, the match there, very interesting uh, encounter. You've just seen the seeding list, and in fact, the number two seed, John McEnroe, is leading the way on number one court today, and he's playing Butch Waltz of the United States, a 25-year-old Californian. He's six foot four inches tall, clearly a, a power man, and uh, who reached the quarterfinals of the United States Open in 1978. Well, McEnroe, we don't need to say too much about him. He also, of course, is from the United States, left-hander, seeded number two here, still only 21 years old, the reigning US Open champion, and, of course, reached the semi-final here in 1977, when he was only 18 years old. So let's join the start of this match on number one, called Butch Waltz against the number two seed, John McEnroe, Bill Throwfall, and Peter West. Seemed to be rather a late call. I'm sure it was the correct one, but it was a bit late. Love, 15. Fifteen all. Very strong sun shining in the eyes of the Borg as he tosses up the ball. Fifteen thirty. Close indeed, but very good judgment. With a lovely wrong foot and volley. Forty, thirty. Oh, great play. Deuce. Both those ground strokes of uh, El Chefe were as near the line as could be, but what a wonderfully angled high volley. Advantage, Borg. First service. Yes, it would have come in. Advantage, El Shafi. I don't think Borg hesitated for a moment. He knew that one was coming in. Terribly difficult ball to volley. So it's break point. First service. Oh, that's a wild one. Juice.
Advantage Borg. Yes. Each man has now served one double fault. Oh, that's incredible. Now, that is quite incredible. He anticipated perfectly that the ball volley was coming back to the backhand and the two-hander produce that magnificent passing shot. Yes. So Borg saves the second break point against him with the first ace of the match. Okay. Advantage Borg. Game to Borg, one game all, second set. And that was a hard game for Borg. There were six deuces and there were two break points against him there. Interesting thing, we were making the comment earlier in the first set when it was played, how much more Borg is following in his service today. Much more so than he normally does. One all. Fifteen, love. Fifteen, all. Borg really does stand a long way back here to receive the service because it is a very fast service from the Egyptian. But he's about eight feet behind the baseline. Fifteen thirty. Let. First service. The ball is there. 30 all. And that Borg shot was only about two or three inches above the net, and it had the heavy top spin on, making it dip, and yet El Sheffi got it away first time. So a break point for Borg. Let. First service.
Hughes. That very low ball with the slice on is the difficult one for Borg's forehand. Of course, he adapts well usually by whipping it up, but failed to time that one. Advantage El Shafe. different conditions from last week at Eastbourne where we had howling gales all through the week. There's hardly a touch of wind here at all. That's probably the reason why we had so much uh, light rain and drizzle earlier. Advantage El Shafe. Advantage El Shafe. <laughs> game to El Shafe. El Shafe leads by two games to one in the second set. Borg leads by one set to love. And he did well there in both service games now. He's had service points against him, and he's having to contend with some very fierce drives from Borg at 15.30 in the last game. The Borg return. We shall see he moves in on the second serve, and there's the familiar topspin. And El Shaf is in at the net. Now Borg has a choice of ways to go there, and he guessed right. He has choice again, and El Shaf, he guesses right again. And he did awfully well to hang on there, I must say. News of the second test at Lords. In fact, no further play today at Lords. There will be no further play at Lords today. There was just 36 minutes this morning when England took their score from 33 for nil to 51 for nil. Boycott and Gooch are still there. Check for you now on number one court, where the first set has been won by John McEnroe, the number two seed. He's uh, won the first set by six games to three against Butch Waltz, having had a break of serve in the second game. Now back to the centre. Well, what an extraordinary change. In the first set, not one service went beyond 15. Here, every service is gone to deuce. No breaks, and Borg is 1-2. Oh. 15, love. Fifteen all. Oh. 
First service. Thirty fifteen. There's no, there's no call, but um, it's been given from the Ampartia one four. Very clever play by the Egyptian. Thirty all. Borg didn't expect to see uh, El Shafi come in behind that first one. Thirty forty. So here's a an unexpected break point. Advantage Borg. Yes. And what may have worried Borg a bit there was to see the uh, returner of the service in at the net against him, ready to play a volley past him. May well have disconcerted Borg that and forced the uh, net off volley. Advantage Borg. Game to Borg. Two games all, second set. And those four games have taken 22 minutes, whereas the first set took just 20 minutes. Love, 15. <laughs> 15 all. Thirty, fifteen.
study all. Thirty forty. 40. Joseph is certainly swinging the service about from one side to the other, trying to unsettle Borg in the receiving of the service, but that's his third double fort. Change the balls, please. Borg leads by three games to two in the second set and by one set to love. That last game, maintaining the sequence in the second set, which has been most unusual. There have been break points in every game. El Shafi in the previous two service games was in one each. Uh, in, he had one point in each against him to lose his serve, but held on. Borg had two break points in the second game and one in his last service game. And they've gone to deuce in every one except the last. And Borg, of course, is so dangerous when you serve him wide. We saw El Shafi take a terrible risk. He'd missed his first serve, and he put his second one out wide, and it wasn't really deep enough or fast enough. It gave Borg plenty of time to pick his spot, and he's at his most dangerous in that situation. A pity for the Egyptian because he'd been serving well up to that point. There is the break. Borg serving now with the new balls. Leading 3-2. Fifteen, love. Love. The first time, El Shafi, uh, really wrong-footed Borg on that volley. Most of his high volleys have been across court. 40-15. Forty thirty. Game to Borg. Borg leads by four games to two. Second set. I can't remember having seen Borg follow his first service in so much as he's been doing today, particularly in the first set. Fifteen, love. When Borg played 
Herolitis in that famous semi-final a couple of years ago. Bork had to come in a great deal behind his serve then because Garolitis was so good on the net and he had to beat him there. Thirty, love. Night. First service. Love. Right. Forty, fifteen. Yes, oh, oh. Uh, oh, Sheffy didn't hear. Now, Sheffy didn't hear the call after the let of four. The indicator, indicator four. Yes, that was interesting. The umpire said the indicator indicated a fault. Umpire has a uh, little machine up there, and the linesman has uh, a piece in his ear to hear the bleep. Game to El Chaffe. Borg leads by four games to three in the second set and by one set to love. John, I'm not imagining things, am I? Have you seen Borg come in behind this service as much as this? No, in fact, I've been making notes to that effect. I think we'll be reading in our papers tomorrow about new look Borg, who's obviously determined that he's brushing up that area of his game, which is relatively a weakness, but only relatively. And uh, interesting, too, in that game, that we should have seen uh, real first-time first use of the electronic eye, which guards the service line and the uh, 15 or 17 inches or so beyond it. And the umpire it was, uh, here's the linesman, who's rigged up with the... Well, he's taken it off now, but he actually has a, an uh, earpiece which he can uh, use to hear the bleep if it's going to happen. And Jeremy Shales there has a box beside him which indicates whether the ball has been a fault. And it was needed that time because the linesman hadn't called, but Jeremy Shales saw the telltale light. Interesting that the players accepted it without murmur as well. Ball 4-3. 15, love. Thirty, love. Thirty, fifteen. Fifteen. First service. Forty thirty. Game to ball. 
Borg leads by five games to three, second set. The other thing that interested me today, opening day of the centre court, when the grass is very green, we've only had one player on the floor today. They're standing up awfully well on this green grass. Fifteen, love. First service. Fifteen all. Thirty, fifteen. Forty, fifteen. Game to El Chape. Borg leads by five games to four in the second set and by one set to love. John, I think El Chape is uh, playing really very well indeed, considering he's not a full time tournament player now. But nevertheless, in spite of it being the opening day, I think uh, one sees Borg suffering a little from the lack of grass court practice that he, like most of the other players, have suffered because of the weather. I think one of his advantages, of course, to El Chape is that is, is that he's a left-hander and has this natural swinging serve and it's a shot which Borg finds difficult to play against and uh, when he's playing well as he has been for much of this match El Shafi's serve is a very difficult one indeed to return he's made the mistake of serving a little bit short sometimes and uh, that's about Borg time to swing and Borg's taking the precaution of course of standing well back he's taking no chances with it Now he has the opportunity to move into a commanding lead. He's serving for the second set at 5-4. Love. Forty, love. Three set points. It's well out. Game and second set to Borg, six games to four. Borg leads by two sets to Love. And that second set took Third just, set. Took just El Chaffee to serve. 40 minutes. Oh. 
Second service, please. Well, that's interesting. Jeremy Shales appears to have overruled that decision. And they're going to have a let on the second serve. Love, 15. Love, 30. No. First service. Thirty. Lightning reaction there by El Safi on the volley. Fifteen forty. So two break points for Borg in the opening game of the third set. Game to Borg. First game, third set. Borg leads by two sets to Love. And now Bjorn Borg beginning to settle into that familiar pattern of whipped topspin returns of serve, which make it so very difficult for the incoming volleyer to deal with. And then he usually has a choice on the next shot because the volley is so often put in mid-court, and we saw it on two or three occasions in that last game. In fact, it's worth looking again at the last point of the game, 15.40, El Shafi stands. He really needs a good serve here, and it is. It's nice and deep, but look at that return, and he has to play it as a half volley, and it's left him for dead, because Borg has a choice now, and he chooses to go that way, and El Shafi doesn't even move. Borg to serve. So already with a break in hand, one love, third set. 15 love. Forty, love. Forty fifteen. That drop volley stops the rot. Borg has won uh, eight, twelve. Yes. Game to Borg. Borg leads by two games to Love. Third set. So that drop volley stopped the rot, but Borg had, Borg had won uh, twelve points out of thirteen. And he really is on song now, going very sweetly, everything coordinating. Huh. 
15, love. Love. And the old Chaffee serves his first ace of the match. Flat. First service. <laughs> Forty, love. James Earl Shaffey. <laughs> Borg leads by two games to one in the third set and by two sets to love. And we saw the best of Earl Shaffey there. Uh, Borg was really given no chance by some really tremendous serving. And the Egyptian is immensely experienced. Uh, it's a long time ago now since he was 15. He's 32 now. But since the age of 15, he's been the Egyptian number one. And if you were with us at the beginning of the transmission this afternoon, you'll know from what Dan Maskell tells you that he's a past junior winner here at Wimbledon in 1964. He won the junior event after being a runner-up the previous year. And then in 1965, he won what many people consider as the world's unofficial junior championships, the Orange Bowl played in Miami over Christmas. And so he was, in his year, probably among the best couple of juniors in the world, and never quite fulfilled that tremendous promise. Partly due to a wonderful physique he had as a youth. He was very strong, and that helped him, particularly on clay, at which he excelled. Ball then 2-1 with a break, third set. Love, 15. Love, 30. Fifteen thirty. Mm. Fifteen forty. And that well disguised forehand from El Shafi gives the Egyptian two break points. Thirty, forty. Advantage ball. Change the ball. Change the ball, please. Ball leads by three games to one. Third set. What a chance Danny missed because mm. he had uh, his two break points but then failed to 
get the ball over the net. And ball getting very good deep first serves in. Of course, for those of you who are un unfamiliar with the system, we change balls after the first seven and then after every subsequent nine games. 3-1, ball leads. Thirty, love. Forty, love. That was a shot that looked as though Borg hadn't had much practice on grass. Completely mistimed that one. Game to Olshape. Borg leads by three games to two, third set, and by two sets to love. I can imagine Borg John uh, not being too upset if this match went on for quite a while. <laughs> In forms of practice. I know what you mean, because he was saying, wasn't he, that uh, he hasn't had anything like as much mm. practice as usual. Although uh, he'd engineered it so that his Davis Cup match that he was involved in a couple of weeks ago ended to allow him to come here on the Friday of that week. And when he arrived, uh, sadly, the weather was such that he couldn't practice on grass, and uh, he's been practicing I think partly on the fast courts at the Vanderbilt Club at Shepherd's Bush where they've got a carpet which is although nothing really like grass as it's at least fast and uh, some of the players have been practicing on the wood at Queens in the effort to sharpen their games to up the fast surface but there's nothing like grass court play and they all are a little bit rusty in that respect ball 3-2 third set Fifteen all. Thirty, fifteen. And Borg really opening up on the service now, really opening his shoulders. Let. Take it off, please. First service. First service. Yes, a correction. I think the linesman realised he'd made a mistake. Corrected himself. 40, 30.
Borg leads by four games to two, third set. Well, Shafi a little unlucky with that attempt at the backhand passing shot down the line because Borg hadn't covered that side at all. So, 2 4, third set, Shafi serving. Fifteen, love. Well, that, that couldn't have been nearer. Fifteen, all. Thirty. Fifteen. Thirty all. It's always been very adept, El Shafiat, getting the awkward lob away from well behind his uh, shoulder and to each side of the court, too. So once again, a wonderful example of the speed of foot and the speed off the mark by Borg there. Advantage El Chape. Yes. Can't afford the luxury of a double fault at this stage of the third set, El Shafi. Borg. So a break point for Borg. by five games to two in the third set and by two sets to love. So Bjorn Borg there asserting himself once more. That's the second break in this set. The first game was a break to 15 and there after a couple of deuces. And it's the way he can disguise those passing shots that makes him such a difficult opponent. It's the top spin 
We saw it there in the last point. It's advantage ball here, the last point of the game. There is the top spin making it so. Look at the way El Shafi has to volley it from. He did jolly well to get it at all. And then the whipped up top spin, which could equally as well have gone across the court. But Borg chose to go down the line. And El Shafi was left for dead. And the boys have got the balls at the wrong end, I think. Or Bjorn's asking for them, that's right, the, the far end is still. Oh well, they do very well, these lads. They're from the local schools in the Wandsworth area. But they just had a slight lapse there. 5 2 then, serving for the match. Love, 15. Love, 30. <laughs> 15, 30. I think uh, Al Shafi thought that was a let. First service. And Jeremy Shales has confirmed the fact. Love 40. So three volleys in the net makes it love 40. Three break points for El Chevy. Love 40. Game Joel Chappé, Borg leads by five games to three, third set. Now, can he hold his serve and stay in this first round? Fifteen, love. Love. Right. First service. Oh. Extraordinary, Dan, because Bjorn was walking, actually. He thought that was an ace. Love. Well, that's a fantastic angle. That's a remarkable angle. And he played it from inside the tram lines, I think. Game to El Shafi. Borg leads by five games to four in the third set and by two sets to love. Well, of course, we shall never know whether Bjorn deliberately hit that return of serve out when he thought his opponent had served, say, uh, an ace. He would, it certainly was walking towards the other court and pulled up sharp. And when he actually had hit his return out, 
Um, El Shafi gave him a smile. I think perhaps he believed that he had given him the point. Never mind. Uh, it was a good enough first serve anyway. And El Shafi, when he's been getting that first serve in, has been playing particularly well. And he's hit some really deft volleys this afternoon. The last point of that last game was a beauty. There is the serve, which is returned so wide, but look at the way he takes all the pace off the ball and just drops it across for a dead winner. So for the second time, Bjorn Borg with a chance to serve out the match 5-4. Love. How very difficult it is to anticipate where Borg is going to put the two-hander. Two-handers have a natural disguise anyway. Thirty, love. Love. So three match points, the title holder, Borg. Forty fifteen. Let. First service. Oh, that's a loose solo. 40, 30. So two of his uh, match points have gone. That's it. Well, that's the first one for Borg on the way to seven victories, which he'll have to uh, obtain if he's to win the title again. Game, set and match to Borg. Three sets to love. 6-3, 6-4, 6-4. So, Borg's 29th successive win at Wimbledon. The number one seed goes through, the defending champion, and his next opponent will be either Shlomo Glickstein of Israel or Raul Ramirez of Mexico, both unseeded.